My birth name is Beatriz. And uh, the translation in Czech, because my mom is Czech, is Božena. And uh, my family calls me Betty. My family, my personal friends call me Betty, and that's Boženka. So I was looking for a stage name, something that wasn't my birth name, but something that I can identify with. And um, somebody very close to me said, you know, why don't you use Boženka? And I was laughing. I was like, I can't use this name. You know, it's just like Betty or it's a nickname. But everyone really liked the sound of the name Boženka, that, that also the fact that it has the Z. They say that names with a Z bring good fortune. And so I started to use the name and it just really, now I don't even think about it, but when I taught in Poland, everyone thought I was Polish. Or when I teach here, everyone's like, is she Croatian? Where is she from? You know, they, they do understand the meaning of the name. And I like it, you know. Um, my mom told me too that uh, that's the meaning of the name and I think it's nice, you know, to be touched by God. I think we all are and, and when I dance, I, I feel like I have a communication with the divine, so I, I, I like the name. I started in school, actually in elementary school, with um, dance programs inside the school. I never went to a private academy. You know, my parents didn't have to pay a lot of money or anything. I come from a humble family, so I signed myself up for these classes in, in primary school. We call it elementary school. And little by little, I was always involved in music, in the band, and in dancing. And this was always, for me, hard to choose. You know, I loved both so much. And I still think that there's a musician inside of me. And that's how I dance, you know. Um, but that's really how it started. I saw my teacher dancing in a restaurant. And I was completely taken and mesmerized. And, and I thought, oh. I have to learn this, you know, this is so beautiful. And I didn't start until five years later when I finally said, okay, I want to belly dance. And then when I went to register to it, the school, it was called the Mid-Eastern Dance Exchange in Miami Beach, it was her. But I didn't know. I walked in and I remembered her face and I thought, oh. And I told her, I saw you like five years ago in a restaurant. And she just looked at me, she's like, okay, you know. <laughs> But for me, for me, it was a sign, you know. I, I, it was the same dancer that I saw five years later. And the moment I took the first class, I was hooked, you know. It was very difficult. It was challenging, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. When I started to learn belly dancing, my teacher was always very careful not to be sexual when she taught. And it was good. It was responsible because we were beginners. But then the more I studied, the more I discovered that I can use my sexuality to dance in a tasteful way. So then you start to explore and you start to pull out more of that uh, sexuality without making your audience uncomfortable. I think that's the beauty, when, when you can be okay with your femininity, with your sexuality, and, and feel comfortable using it. I just took classes all the time, I spent all my money on belly dance classes and she used to joke, she used to say, I'm going to put a bed in the studio for you. The first dance I learned, that's funny that you asked that because Shakira was very popular then with a song called Ojos Asi. And my teacher made a little choreography, very simple for beginners, to that song. And that was the first song that I, that was the first belly dance choreography that I learned in class. I never performed it or anything, but yeah, it's funny, you know, it was, I think, around 2000, no, 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 it was 98, in 98, when she came out with this song, and we learned a little choreography to it, and I didn't know that some years later, I would be choreographing for her, so. Living in Miami, you have access to a lot of stars, a lot of celebrities, and a lot of people. Also, it's all about who you know in the circle of musicians, you know. Um, I was married to a singer-songwriter who had his own musicians and Shakira hired those musicians and so I was in the same circle and she met me and we talked about belly dancing and 
And then like a year later, I get, you know, an email. Can you work with Shakira? You know, I was a big Shakira fan when I was younger, 19, 20. And, and then years later to, to have the opportunity to work with her was pretty amazing. By that time, I wasn't a huge fan, but I really respected her, you know. And of course, I say that a lot of it is luck and who you know. But I think I made a good impression too, because then she, she keeps calling me back to work with her. I don't know if the word is stubborn, but she definitely has her hand in everything she does. Also with the music, with everything. So when I work with her, it's not like I walk in and I say, okay, this is what you're gonna do, five, six, seven, eight, that's it, no. She will look at it and say, well, I don't know. Can I see something else? And then I pull out something, okay, this. I don't know, you know. So I have to give her a lot of ideas. I have to also work with her ability, you know. She, sometimes she's limited because she doesn't have enough time. If I had a month or two to work with her, then I can teach her a lot of new things. And, but uh, this last time I worked with her, she had such a short time to learn all these choreographies. So I have to l work with the movements that she knows. Um, but it was a lot more fun this time around. I remember the first time I worked with her, I was still a little bit green. And I was a little bit intimidated. And, uh, but this time I was a lot more direct. And, and I said, no, you need to learn this. You, you need to work harder. You know? So I was being a little bit stronger. And it was also easier because she had, there was another choreographer there who is her choreographer for all of her show, for her whole show. So this, this girl is incredible. She learns everything. So Shakira can always use her as a reference. So she was there, this other girl, and, and it, it became a lot easier to work with two of us, two against one. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it's good. I didn't know that I was going to dance for Hugh Hefner. I was hired along with another dancer to dance for a private party. But many times they don't tell you who you're going to dance for because they don't want you to, I don't know, bring your camera or bring friends with you, you know. If I, if I told someone that I was dancing for Hugh Hefner, all of the men would want to come with me, all of my friends. So we just showed up. And when we saw him, we, we both started laughing. We said, oh, it's Hugh Hefner. It was a private dinner party in a very exclusive restaurant in Miami. Um, and he had a reserved space, and it was him and a lot of women, of course. And this was interesting because as soon as we started dancing, the women wanted to be very sexual with us. And by the end of the party, we were teaching them movements, hip drops, shimmies, but normal. It wasn't so overly sexual, you know. I think that um, they thought what everyone seems to think, you know, when a belly dancer comes out, ooh, ooh. But, you know, by the end of the show, I think they were able to see that it takes a lot of skill. If I'm on an airplane next to a stranger or if I'm speaking to somebody that has just handed me a religious pamphlet, you know, I'm not going to say, I'm a belly dancer, you know. So I always say I'm a dance teacher. I travel around the world and I choreograph and oh, what kind of dance? And I say, belly dancing. They say, ballet dancing. Oh, it's very nice. And I think, yeah, I don't look like a ballerina, you know, <laughs> come on. So I say, no, no, belly dancing, you know, oriental dance. But if you say oriental dance, a lot of people think Asia, you know. So then finally I have to say, like, from the Arab countries, and then, you know, so it's really, it is misunderstood. So many times I just... Um, I throw in the Shakira choreographer thing because, you know, then you get a little more respect. Because unfortunately, what people see from belly dancing is sometimes just in a restaurant or sometimes, it, a lot of times, it's misrepresented. For example, in Miami, there are many restaurants where outside in the street, around tables, the dancers are, you know, like collecting tips and stuff. and and it doesn't have a good image, and this is what people see, and so when I tell them I'm a belly dancer, they think that that's what I do. The dancers in the restaurants, 
this is how you get a lot of experience. This is kind of like the grassroots of the dance because it is a dance that you share with people in close proximity. You know, now it's taken to the theater and everything, but it's complicated. It's very misunderstood, and I think I'm a, like a missionary. I'm always educating people, always talking to them, and I think the best way for them to understand what I do is to see me dance. If I'm teaching a beginner's class, I'm assuming that nobody there knows the basics, and, and so I really explain a lot. In Argentina, when I taught for all these students, the level is very high, so they know. And I just have to do my thing and they follow. It's unbelievable. The level in, in Buenos Aires is incredibly high, and that's all due to my sponsor there. His name is Amir Taleb. He's uh, actually a male dancer, and he was one of my first teachers too. And he has brought this level of the dance in Buenos Aires to a very high level, so you can stand in front of 800 students and do something, and they all do it pretty much. Of course, you, you can't say, okay, the fifth row, the tenth girl, you know, that's on a different level. But when I have small classes, like here in Maribor, my classes this weekend had, I think the biggest class was 28 girls. Then I can go around the room and look at everyone and make corrections, and that's personally my favorite thing to do. I also like to coach one-on-one, -on -one, to really look at a dancer and say, okay, I think you need this and that, and this is what you can change to make your dance better. You know, I love to teach. I actually, if I had to choose teaching or performing, I, I would choose teaching. Usually, in my class, in my workshops, I can always say that I'm gonna have somebody above 60, somebody younger than 15, and a man, usually. More and more I'm seeing men in my classes, which I really like. Entering a competition and winning is like getting a job promotion. You know, all of a sudden, everyone is more interested in you, and I think that this is why a lot of dancers enter competitions, just to, to get a little bit more recognition, for learning and growing experience. Um, and of course, when you win, it has the best outcome. But I think if you don't win, you also learn a lot. At the moment, I'm in love with Greece. And I'm actually living there part of the year in Crete. But I really love Spain. Um, I, there's so many, you know. Even Japan, I wanted to, to be there for, for a long time. I think the question is easier asked if you tell me what country would you not want to live in, but I don't want to answer that. No. <laughs> I really love food. Um, I love my Cuban food. That's the thing I miss the most because Mexican... Do you cook? I cook, yeah, I do. Um, I miss that sometimes. I miss having a kitchen and cooking and, you know, you have, for example, Mexican food is pretty easy to find even, even in Slovenia, you can find Mexican food. It's pretty easy to find something Mexican. But Cuban food is hard to find. And sometimes I have seen advertised like a Cuban restaurant. And I'm like, oh, Cuban restaurant. And I go and they're serving chimichangas and, you know, everything that's not Cuban. So I miss like black beans and my tostones, you know, plantains and that kind of food I miss. But I, I love everything.